Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about creating a nested loop in JavaScript. And then I also want to talk to you guys about creating a two dimensional array. So a nested loop is a situation where we have a loop inside of a loop. It's kind of like loop inception. And a two dimensional array is when each element inside of our array is itself an array. And believe it or not, nested loops and two dimensional arrays go really well together. So I decided I'll just put them in the same video. The first thing I want to show you is creating a nested loop. So I'm going to come down here and we basically are just creating a loop within a loop. So I'm going to say for var i is equal to zero, i is less than let's say four and this should be lowercase and then it's gonna be I plus plus. So we have our loop right here. And now inside of this loop, I actually wanna create another loop. So I'm gonna say for there. Now here's the thing, we already used this variable I to keep track of the iterations for this first loop. So we wanna use a variable called J. And generally, it doesn't have to be called J, but generally when people use nested loops like this, they'll name it I and then J. That's kinda of like, I don't know, like what most people do. And we can say i is less than three, for example. And then, or whoops, this should be j is less than three. See, these are already getting confusing. And then we can say j plus plus, okay. So inside of this for loop, we have another for loop, right? So this is our highest level for loop. And then we have this nested for loop inside of it. So I wanna show you guys like how this is gonna get executed. And you know, once you kind of know what's happening here and you kind of wrap your mind around it, you're gonna be able to use nested loops, no problem. So I wanna kind of try to push you in the right direction of understanding this. So why don't we write out to the document? So I'll say document.write. And I basically just wanna print out the values for i and j. So we'll just say i is equal to, and then i, and then we'll say comma, j is equal to, and we'll just say j. And then I also wanna just print a new line here. So we'll make a break tag, cool. So this is basically gonna print out the values for i and j on every iteration of this loop. And when we refresh the page, you'll see what happens. So over here on the page we have, uh, it's basically telling us like i is equal to zero, j is equal to zero, okay. Then i is still equal to zero, j is equal to one. Okay, so i is still equal to zero, then j is equal to two. Here's what's happening. On the first iteration of the i loop, on the first iteration of that top loop, right, we actually loop through the entirety of j. So j is looped through all the way for one iteration of the i loop, right? So zero, 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 this is all on the same loop number of i and j looped through three times, which is as many times as it can loop through. So for every iteration of i, j will fully run. In other words, the loop inside of j is gonna get fully executed. And that's kind of what's happening here. So you can see like, here's the first execution of i, these three. Here's the second execution of i, these three. And then we have the third and the fourth down there. And so that's kind of how nested loops are gonna work, is that every time we go through one iteration of this top loop, we're gonna go through every iteration of this bottom loop. And there's a lot of situations where that's gonna come in handy and we can you know, take advantage of something like this. So now I wanna introduce a topic which is two-dimensional arrays. And two-dimensional arrays and nested loops actually go really well together. So I'm gonna show you how we can use them together. First order of business though is using this two-dimensional array. So I'm actually gonna get rid of this guy down here so we're not printing anything. And I wanna create a two-dimensional array. So I'm gonna say var number grid. We're gonna create like a grid of numbers and we'll set this equal to an array. So this is just gonna be a normal array. But here's the thing, every element inside this array is gonna be an array in itself. So the first element of the array is gonna be an array. The second element's gonna be an array, et cetera. So I'll create the first element and we'll just create an array and I'm gonna give it some numbers. So one, two, three. Then we'll create another element inside of the number grid array, which is gonna be an array. So we'll say four, five, six. And finally, we'll just make another one seven, eight, nine. And actually, why don't we make one more just to kind of drive the point home here. We'll, it'll just be zero. So you'll notice that this array down here has a different number of elements than all of these arrays. And that's kind of, 
something that you can do when we're using these nested loops. So if I wanted to access individual elements inside of this number grid, I can do that um, by specifying the row that they're in and specifying the column that they're in. So just for a refresher, usually like horizontal is gonna be rows and vertical is gonna be columns. So this would be like row one, or I guess if we're talking about arrays, this would be row zero, this would be row one, this would be row two, etc. And then this would be column one, this would be column two, and this would be column three, or column zero, one, and two, because with arrays, you always start with zero. So let's see if we can print out some of these elements. Document dot write, and why don't we print out this first element right here? So we'll print out this one. The way that I can access this is by saying number grid, and I actually want to give this a row, and I wanna give it a column. So the first thing I'm gonna do is give it a row. So that one is at row zero, so I'm gonna say, zero, and then we wanna specify what column it's at in that row. So it's at column zero, right? So this one is at position zero, zero. So let's save this and we'll come over here and it should print out. And actually, I think I have a typo here. Yeah, this should be document, my bad. So over here now we'll be printing out one. So we're accessing the element at position zero, zero. Let's say I wanted to print out this nine, right? This is in column or this is in row zero, one, two, so it's in row two, and it's in column two as well. So it's like all the way at the bottom right. And so now we'll be able to print out that nine. Let's say we wanted to print out this five, which is right in the middle here. That's gonna be in row one, column one. So that's basically how we can access any of these elements inside of these arrays is we can use these two square brackets here to specify the row and then specify the column. So now let's see how we can use this with our nested loop. Basically we can use this nested loop in order to write out the contents of the array. So all I wanna do here is just spit out the contents of this array. Easy enough. The first thing we need to do is modify some of these values, right? So up here, we're saying i less than four. But really, what we want this to be is i less than the number of rows inside of our two-dimensional array. So what I can say here is number grid dot length. And this is gonna give us the number of rows inside of this length. In other words, or the number of rows inside of the number grid. It's gonna give us, you know, one, two, three, four, because we have four rows. And the next thing we wanna do is change the number down here. So instead of being number grid length, we want it to be number grid i dot length. So here we're referring to a specific row inside of the number grid, and we're getting the length of that array. So hopefully this makes sense, like why we're using these different attributes. Now, once we've done that, all we have to do is just print out the contents of the array. So I'm just gonna paste this guy that I got from up there. And instead of accessing number grid one, one, we're gonna wanna access number grid I and number grid J. And this will basically give us every single element inside of this array. And then after this nested for loop, I'm just gonna create a new line because this will mean we're moving on to another row. So let's do that. Now, when I refresh the page, you'll see that the contents of our array prints out. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. What's cool is even though this zero array down here was a different length than the other ones, our program doesn't care. It basically is just getting the length dynamically and it's able to loop through as many elements as it needs. So let's step through this one more time just so you guys understand exactly what's happening. Down here, we're saying four, their i is equal to zero and we want to loop through this top loop for as many rows as there are in our 2D array. And we can get the rows by just saying number grid dot length, right? This is just the number of entries inside of the array. Down here in our nested loop, for each row inside of our number grid, inside of our two-dimensional array, we want to loop through all of the elements inside of it. So each row is itself an array. So we can say number grid i, accessing the specific row 
in the two-dimensional array and then get the length of it. So we wanna loop through all the elements. Then down here, we're just printing out each individual element. So we're printing out i, j, and then we get our result over here. So that's the basics of nested loops and two-dimensional arrays. Now, obviously there's other uses for nested loops than just for looping through 2D arrays, but this is kind of like the classic example. You always see these like taught together because they go together so well. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.